The third abstract looks at an aspect of trimodality therapy for stage 3 disease. Trimodality meaning chemotherapy, radiation, and surgery. And probably the most important trial investigating trimodality therapy to date is the intergroup 0139 study led by Kathy Albane and colleagues and published in The Lancet about four years ago. So in this trial of stage 3 non-small cell lung cancer, all patients initially received concurrent chemoradiation, with half of the patients then getting surgical resection. In this trial, in the total population, there was a significant improvement in progression-free survival, but no difference in overall survival in the total population. Now, when you looked at the subset of patients in the surgery group whose surgery was a lobectomy, so that is the removal of just a lobe of the lung, they actually did better with surgery than the patients who did not have surgery. But what if the surgery needed was a pneumonectomy, the removal of an entire lung? In that case, those surgery patients did worse than those who did not have surgery. This study here does not address the role of radiation because all of the patients in the study had radiation, and that was the focus of the Swiss study presented by Dr. Pless. So in this trial, patients with stage 3 non-small cell lung cancer all received neoadjuvant or preoperative chemotherapy and were randomized to receive radiation after the chemotherapy before their surgery or to go straight to surgery after chemotherapy. Now, a couple of things to point out about this study. This chemotherapy and radiation is not concurrent. It is sequential, and one of the reasons for that is that this chemotherapy regimen that was given is one of the most toxic regimens around. This is very high-dose cisplatin plus a relatively high-dose docetaxel. Each of these drugs on their own is relatively toxic, and putting it together is quite challenging for patients to receive both. Indeed, all of the patients had to get growth factor support with GCSF to make sure that their blood counts stayed high enough during treatment so they could complete therapy. So let's look at some of the results. First, let's look at radiographic response rates or shrinkage of the tumor. Now, in the chemotherapy group that did not receive radiation, the response rate was 32%. And in the radiation group, after they finished radiation, it was 69%. So we do see a higher response rate with the addition of radiation therapy before surgery. But it's interesting to me that when you look in this radiation group, even before they had radiation, after they got the same chemotherapy as the patients in the no radiation arm, their response rate was almost twice as high. And I will say that this imbalance of response rates across arms, I think, is just one of those chance happenstances that we see in clinical research. So despite the increase in response rate in the radiation arm, this did not translate to a significant difference in event-free survival nor did it result in a significant increase in overall survival with largely overlapping Kaplan-Meier curves. So what can we conclude from this third study? Well, the addition of sequential radiation therapy to neoadjuvant or preoperative chemotherapy did not improve event-free survival or overall survival for stage 3 non-small cell lung cancer. It did increase response rates, as I showed you, and it also increased the rates of complete surgical resection at the time of the operation. We can't apply these results to the role of radiation when it's given adjuvantly or postoperative for this disease. That is a completely different clinical scenario in question. And I don't think we can apply these results to chemoradiation when it's given concurrently at the same time. And one question that is going to plague this type of trial over and over again is that a relatively small study size contribute to the negative study endpoints. This is a study that had about 300 patients. Doing trials with surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation is very difficult to do. Some of the stage 
four lung cancer trials that I'll be showing you today enrolled almost a thousand patients. It's just a much more straightforward undertaking. Thanks for listening. If you like and learn from our Grace Cast, you can subscribe on iTunes by just searching for the term Cancer Grace, find podcasts in the subject you want, pick a format of audio or video, and then just click subscribe. It's that easy. And for those of you who don't want to miss any of our programs, there's even a feed for all subjects. You can also find us on YouTube at Grace for Cancer Info. And that's the number four in one word, Grace for Cancer Info. Finally, if you haven't been there yet, please check out our Grace website at www.cancergrace.org. And don't forget that donate button in the upper right. Our content, which helps tens of thousands of cancer patients around the world every month, is made possible by your support.